Welcome to the channel for the first time viewers. Welcome back from my existing subscribers. I'm feeling under the weather, not my best day. However, I felt like it was very important to make this video. I searched high and low for this question. Can the Corsair H60 cool the i9 10900K? Because as you saw, I just upgraded to the i7 10700K. It was such a good experience that I went ahead and upgraded to the 10900K right after, right? So just paid the little difference and did the exchange at Best Buy. I kind of like that they don't charge restock fees or anything like that. So now I'm happy. I'm all set, right? And before I made the jump, I wanted to know what else I needed to factor into this decision and cooling was going to be a thing. Um, everywhere I look, I didn't see anybody using anything other than like 240 millimeters and the TDP of the 10700K, so the thermal rating, is 125, and it's the same for the 10900K. I understand there's two more cores, and I was like, okay, well, maybe I can get by with using the same cooler. If it keeps it at a decent temperature, then I should be straight, uh, especially since that it did a really good job cooling my 10700K. Like, I would recommend it to any one of my friends um, because it kept it at about, I think the highs that it would get to would be like 76, 77 while I'm gaming, but typically it would be around... Uh, anywhere from 65 to 72 degrees and to me that's perfectly fine um, some people in my benchmark video say that's kind of high but i don't know i came from air coolers that like the ryzen stock ones that 81 82 was not really out of the realm of normal to me back then so it was always better right uh, long story short i put this i put the 10900k together uh put it in the motherboard and slap on the cooler Whew starts off okay <laughs> it starts off i'm like okay this might this might be all right so i didn't overclock it i just ran it at stock but modern warfare wants to run like out of the box and it's kind of crazy i think it's the nvidia reflex that does it uh, but out of the box modern warfare wanted to run this thing at 5.1 gigahertz so it just i didn't press anything it just ran it at 5.1 gigahertz um so what that did to the temperatures is that it was running really at about 75 which isn't the worst thing in the world but by the time I got to my second game, it had warmed up a little bit. So, like, my average temperatures were, like, 77, 78. And that's kind of like, okay, well, eh, it's getting kind of warm, but it's not the end of the world still. What made me say that it can't cool it, um, so the answer is that it cannot, right? What makes me say that it can't cool it is that my spikes, like, it would, like, I was hitting the NVIDIA Shadow Player um, to record, right? I would hit record, and it would spike up to like 85 degrees. It's like, okay, that's that's the max that I would be comfortable with it spiking up to. Um, but by the time I got to the third game, I would hit record and it would spike up to like 92. And I was like, yeah, this ain't gonna work. Like, I'm just gonna burn this chip out. I need to get a better cooler. Uh, so I went down to the store. I picked up this Boss Sauce Cooler. That has changed my life and my perspective on just cooling in general. I had six Corsair case fans, uh, three in the front, two up top, and one for the exhaust, right, on the back of my um, H60, which is a 120 millimeter AIO. Um, essentially, for those that have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, the big, long radiator block, so each one of the fans that typically would go on those is 120 millimeters. So when they say it's a 240 millimeter AIO, that means it could fit two of those fans. The one I have is a 360 millimeter AIO. So that means it's one of those long blocks that can fit three of those fans. So the cooling potential is much higher because the, the area is much bigger, right? And I'm not no genius at this, but that's the basic principle. So I got the Corsair H150i Elite Capellix. It was literally like $30 difference from the, what was it? I think it was the 100 H100i Capellix. It was that one was like 150. It was a 240 millimeter and the the 280 millimeter, which is um, two 140 millimeter fans. So obviously that's where you get a 280. So that couldn't get it. You could only order online. So I was like, okay, do I just want to go all in? And this is gonna be a much harder transition for me. And I was like, all right, whatever, I'm gonna do it. So I went in, I, I got the, the 360, <laughs> which is crazy as hell. Um, so I got the 360, took out all my front fans. 
So that was it wasn't too annoying. It's like I I kind of did a decent job cable managing uh, with cable management this time around. So I was able to just go and, you know, everything was passed through the same slot. So I just went to the same general area where all the fan headers were and unplugged all of them grouped together. So my top two case fans are plugged in at the bottom of my motherboard. There's actually three fan headers, uh, one on the left, two on the right. So I plugged them in on the right. So that makes it easy for me. And all my front fans were all in the top right of my motherboard. So all three were just in one straight row. Made it super, super easy, by the way. Um, and I got a, uh, a uh, Z490 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. Um, but yeah, put this thing together, dude. Hurt my fingers trying to get the standoffs from the other AIO off. I got, they were jammed, I guess. Finish up. Launch the game. <laughs> The worst, the worst thing that could have happened possibly is what exactly happened. Um, my temperatures were 100 degrees off rip. <laughs> so I was like, yo, this time I know I had a way better cooler. I don't think it was broken. So I was like, I, it had to be something I did. So I went, I took everything apart as far as on the CPU sides. I took off the, the bracket for the back and I took off the actual CPU cooler, right? Made sure everything was tight, so it was a little bit loose. Um, put it back together. Put new, my own um, thermal paste on there, because I actually have the Corsair thermal paste that I bought like a year ago. So I put my own thermal paste on there. And this thing is a beast. Like, I was playing Madden, and for me, Madden, with my H60, like, I would sometimes get the 78, 81 degrees, and it would drop back down. Like, 81 would be, like, the absolute max. Whereas when I had my air cooler with the 2700X, uh, the Wraith Prism. Yeah, the Wraith Prism, right? Yeah, Wraith Prism. That one used to get, it would spike up to, like, 87 degrees. So, 81, like I said, for it to just peak at 81 for a split second and then drop back down to, like, 77. Uh, I was okay with that, with the H60. And then, for the most part, it ran between 70 and 77. This thing was like hard locked at like 55 degrees. <laughs> it, just, it blew my mind. So I was like, yo, this is insane. Like, I'm, this is a whole new level of cooling for me. Um, I go to play another game, same thing. It's like 60 degrees. I was like, damn, this is wild, man. And this is obviously on the 4.9 gigahertz all core clock. Um, that's like the, the stock Intel boost on this. So I don't know if I'm gonna try to overclock cause I'm not a big overclocking type of dude. I feel like in most cases, you're gonna get a couple FPS in some programs, which I don't really use those programs. Um, you do get a big performance boost out of it for gaming. I mean, some games you benefit, but I don't know. For me, it's just not worth the, the tinkering, the hassle. And I don't have like the right test to actually run through like Cinebench and then pass it through three or four times, which uh, Tech Imperium kind of said that's how he got his overclock is he just tweaked the voltage and once he got to a point where his system was stable for three passes, then he kept it at that. So I don't know, man. I just keep running it at stock. Whatever, whatever the stock configuration is, is, is where I'm at. And this, it's like the same with with Ryzen. Right? I just use PBO and I use XMP. That's really the only thing. Just those two click buttons and good to go. I've tried overclocking in the past and I've gotten some things to be stable. But I mean, I think it was like when I had my... 2700x i got like another i got it to stay at like 4.05 uh, megahertz so it was just over four four gigahertz instead of dropping down to 3.8 or 3.9 which really wasn't like i could have just left pbo on and it, it boosted it to that and then it would drop to like 3.75 so that's what i'm talking about it's like it's like a 50 60 megahertz difference that really doesn't change everything um but this would be significant because this the, the intel's clock a lot higher when you do overclock them but at the end of the day, like I said, some games you won't even notice the difference, and other games you might get like an extra 15, per, uh, 15 FPS. Um, and for the time, the effort, the potential for being a noob and messing it up, I was like, eh. But this thing is wild, man. I think if I wanted to get an overclocking, I could actually go ahead and rock it out. Even if this thing got up to like 65, like an extra 10 degrees, which usually when I overclock, that's what was happening. It would get like another 10. But with those air coolers, you go from like 77 to like 87. And then your spikes will be up to like 97. So that's why they turned off. This, even if it spiked to that, it would max out at, what, 77 degrees? 
because it would be 67 running with the overclock and then if it spiked 10 degrees <laughs> it's still cooler so yes at the end of the day this capellix is is no joke and um i don't know the h60 it, it does okay but it's scary at times and i wouldn't want to run it long term but it technically technically could cool it technically um but the temperatures were really high and the spikes when it did hit were like really really they were heavy so i wasn't really comfortable with that but that's all i got man this this uh my first 360 first of all my first anything other than a h60 because i've purchased two of them the last one was so good i just bought another one um and yeah game changer so now i think the minimum i'll go is like 240 but keep it with the same corsair or try any one of the other really high-end ones i've heard good things about Ar arctic somebody in my comments was telling me but you know they had they had this in stock at best buy like right by my house so i wasn't gonna order something when i could walk in try it out if it failed didn't work i could return it you know what i mean i like that that uh immediacy of it well you guys be easy i'll catch you in the next video try to drop some nuggets as we go and uh hopefully you guys enjoy the gameplay all right deuces help me out here Can we get this back to the ship? Some good plundering here. Hey, come here.
Fine, thanks. Sunin, guide me. See you, old friend. Get away from me! Yeah. Back to the ship! 